you suppose it means when your tuner makes this face on the dyno? I don't know, you tell me. Mr. McNew, how are you? Good, how you doing? Good, it's always great. great to see you. Good to see you. So, we got a new converter this time. Yep. So we gotta do a naturally aspirated baseline pull. Yep. Then we had the volute on the Sledgehammer Electric Turbo coated by line to line, so we need to test that. Okay. And then it has an AEM meth injection kit on it. Okay. All right, let's do that naturally aspirated pull. That sounds good. I'm just gonna go ahead and jump in here and show you the graph because this is a sad moment. Compared to our baseline pull from last time, we were down like 44 horsepower. That's what you're looking at here. The blue line was this first pull of ours and it only made 341 rear wheel horsepower. The red line was our baseline pull from the last time we were on the dyno, but it was our maximized baseline pull. It was actually the third pull where we dialed in the timing and everything else. And you can tell we made a lot more power. We made 385 rear wheel horsepower. Now, that's quite a difference. 44 rear wheel horsepower is enough to make any grown man cry. We tried a bunch of things. We tried checking the timing, making sure the mechanical timing matched what the computer thought it was. Ray did the phone a friend thing. We checked everything on the EFI. We did all kinds of stuff. Ultimately, we just decided to go ahead and try and make another pull. comes in stronger than before and then it just flattens off. Well, after that run, we did pick up a few numbers, but nothing that wasn't considered within the realm of a variance from run to run, but we were at 344.67 horsepower. So Ray and I ended up scratching our collective heads. We checked to make sure the throttle body was opening all the way and of course it was. And we kind of decided that this was going to be it. Now, I am going to make another video where I go do a very in-depth dive into all this data and really deconstruct it because it is a little bit concerning because even now we're down 41 horsepower. Well, almost 41 horsepower. So this is the only place on YouTube where you're going to get this kind of in-depth data. So please click the subscribe button, give me a like, and I'm on Patreon if you want to, you know, contribute something to the cause. But getting back to this thing, so... Again, we're down some significant amount of power, and I am going to go through, like I said, and, and put out separate videos where I really analyze this in depth. But this led me to calling a guy named Bill Daly over at DinoJet, and he's one of the, the gurus over there. And he taught me a bunch of stuff that even I didn't know, and I've been taking cars to dinos for decades at this point. So the big variable here between last time is a converter. But is that the big variable? No. Weather was also a big variable. But hold on, Alex, you say. Doesn't the dyno correct for variations in weather? Well, yes, yes it does. But Bill Daly at DinoJet did say that that correction is really only intended to take into account weather variations within the same day. It's not intended to take into account weather corrections from two vastly different days, which is what we have here. It was pushing 90 degrees this day. Last time we were at the dyno, well, it was only about 60 degrees. How can I prove that to you? Well, let's change the correction factor, which was another thing that I've given lectures on. I use SAE, which is the industry standard. You know, some people on YouTube in particular like to use others like STD or DIN is my favorite. You wanna see me gain some power? Check this out. We're going from 344 and 385 to 353 and 397. Wow, we picked up all this power. No, we didn't. It's just a click of a mouse. So let's get back to SAE. Again, 344 and 385 are our numbers. Now, if I change this to uncorrected, that's a spread of 41 horsepower. If I change this to uncorrected, you'll see the power from this session actually dropped 
whereas the power from the previous session went up. So we're now what at 49 horsepower variation? That's that's not insignificant. That's that's a big difference. So that does tell you that the weather conditions were dramatically different. We can also see that in the data logs. So this was the run that we just pulled 344 rear roll horsepower on. Our manifold air take temperature was an average of 120. Our AFR was an average of 12.78, and our duty cycle was 33.8. Remember, it's big injectors because this car is designed to run forced induction, which is why we're only running 33.8% duty cycle. However, again, numbers. Matt, 120. AFR, 12.8. Duty cycle, 33.8. Now, the last time we were on the dyno, our mat was 92, a lot cooler. Our duty cycle was a lot higher at 35.14, and our AFR was a bit leaner at 13.2. Those are all ingredients for making not just a little bit more power, but considerably more power. So once again, I can hear you all saying, but Alex, you did change something. You changed the torque converter, right? That's why we're doing a baseline pull. Maybe the torque converter is screwing up. Ah, this is where wisdom from Bill Daly came to shed some light on the subject. So if we graph gear ratio, on here. This is where it gets real interesting. So gear ratio is a calculated number that the dyno calculates. And when a converter is not slipping, that's a term I used on the phone with Bill and he kept correcting me. He said, it's not slippage. It's doing its juju that it does. It does its, you know, magic. So you can't really call it slippage. It's more that it's torque converting or multiplying torque. So when the converter is converting, the gear ratio number actually goes up right? Because there's less direct coupling. And you can see that down low. Look at the blue line. This is, this is our current pull. Look at how much fatter it is down here. And let's see what happens to the gear ratio down there. Look at that. So the gear ratio with the new converter is actually much higher at 4,500 RPM uh, than it was with the old converter. It's a difference of 60.71 to 56.62. So here, the new torque converter is torque converting. Now, what about if we go right into this juncture where the two cross? So here it's still a little bit higher, but it's closing in on it. And then if we go up here, let's say to 5,750, check this out. So up high, the old one is coupling less than the new one is. And also the further up in RPM you go, the less torque multiplication you get with a torque converter, generally speaking. That's not always the case, of course, but Generally speaking, that is the case. So the old converter was actually tighter down low and looser up top. And the new converter is looser down low and tighter up top. So that also may be a factor. The only way to know for sure and know that I'm not BSing you all is to take it to the track, which we're gonna do soon enough. And let's get right on to our first electric supercharger hit and see if the line-to-line -line coated volute allowed the Sledgehammer electric turbo to add more horsepower than it did when it was uncoated. I actually labeled the switches for you, right? Yeah. So turbo and then the meth. So for this one, let's just, just turbo. And hope it doesn't catch fire. <laughs> that's always a bit of an issue. That's, that's right. That's right. Where, where am I now? At least you agreed to the legalese. <laughs> you don't know what you just agreed to, do you? No, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, so uh, once you get it running, as soon as you fire it up, just turn on the electric turbo and it'll do everything automatically. Okay. Now you tell Jason next time you see him, tell him it's, it was a true honor to tune a car that he got to drive. So get, get down here, you're the fluff guy, right? You're the fluff guy. Loser of three dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You turn on the electric turbo now. Yeah, you're at 62 volts, right? Oh yeah, yeah, a lot of voltage. Felt pretty good. What do we do? 511? Yep, 511. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you what, it just, it 
felt strong, you know what I mean? You could feel it want the lock up top. Man, I'll tell you what, we're rich in air fuel too. There's power in this thing. So does line to lines abradable volute coating actually make power? Yes, it does. Because as we've established, the weather conditions aren't comparable and the overall conditions aren't comparable from our last dyno session. But what is comparable is we can look at the improvement in horsepower running the electric supercharger, AKA sledgehammer. So last time our naturally aspirated power peak was 385 rear wheel horsepower and that got all the way up to 532. That's a difference of just a bit under 147 rear wheel horsepower. This time we peaked out at 344 rear wheel horsepower and made just shy of 512 for a difference of over 167 rear wheel horsepower. So without going too far into the weeds, which as I mentioned, I'm going to do in another video. Yes, the volute coating does in fact work and it works very well and it was worth over 20 horsepower in this situation. And I think under similar weather conditions, that difference is going to be even greater. Now let's inject some methanol. For the record, all of our methanol injection tests were with 100% straight methanol. Here's our first pull with no tuning. This is what happens when you inject meth and don't tune for it. Let me give you the quick tutorial, right? All you gotta do for this one is turn on the mess switch too. And it triggers when the electric turbo does. Okay. And it's just that simple. That's simple is good. So we were off my wideband, I figure we would. We pegged that and six horsepower we lost. Well, Peak. Six horsepower. Peak, yep. Yeah. That's it. Yep. By going how much fatter? Point and a half? At least. I mean uh, <laughs> we went know. we went from eleven three to off my wideband at ten three. So who knows? But what you really want to know is what the difference in manifold air temperature is. That's right. So let's go look at that. So unfortunately, we're going to be without Ray's scintillating personality and his wonderful commentary. I, seriously, I like having Ray on camera because I did not think to record this part when we were analyzing the data logs. So sadly, y'all are stuck just with me. But let's take a look. So this is the run before we sprayed the meth. You can see that the mat hit a minimum of 128 and a maximum of 156. Those temperatures are literally making me cringe right now because I just came back from a walk outside where it's in the upper 50s. Why couldn't we have had a day like today to dino on so I didn't have to explain all that other nonsense? It would have saved you about two minutes of your life. But anyway, whatever. Again, 128 to 156 degrees. An average mat of 140. What effect did the meth have without tune? Let's take a look. Oh, just for fun. AFR, an average of 11.6. This is the meth pull. And a lot cooler. 127.3 is our average, and the range was actually not a whole lot. A delta of 5.4 degrees. What was it on the other one? 27.3 degrees. Yeah, the meth does cool the charge quite a bit. And our average AFR was 10.68 with a minimum of 9.8 where... I don't even think that that's accurate down that low. And a high of 14.3, just to bounce back real quick. 10.7 to 13.7, 9.8. Yeah, so we're, uh, we're a good solid point richer or more, probably more on average. I don't think it's going to read that low. And uh, But the mat is a good deal cooler, good deal cooler, like a lot cooler. We went from 140 to 127 on average, but the most important thing is that it barely went up. So, yeah, meth without tuning will cost you some power, but it will be plenty safe. It will cool the charge, but that's a little too much fuel. That, you're eventually going to wash down the rings, especially with methanol. So what we did after this is we made a few more pulls where we pulled 10% fuel out at a time. It took three tries. And we added a degree or two of timing, but when we got to our last pull, this is where we ended up.
good smile or a bad smile? I don't know, you tell me. Did we get it? 549. <laughs> But what are we looking at as far as AFR? We're at 11 and a half up top. It's 11.7. It's right about there. Holy cow, we're there, man. I mean, it is going to lean out when it gets colder outside. I know. I mean, we're there. Yeah, I think I would probably leave it alone. It is the 13th after all. That's pretty good. I was, I was like, okay, let's put it in it and see what it does. It does it. I didn't think it would pick up almost 15 horses, though. I did. Did you really? Yeah, because it, it, I could tell it liked the timing. Does it want any more? Or are we starting to get into the uncomfortable zone? Yeah, I, I think we're good. <laughs> well, we know it's going to be, for almost certain, a nine-second car, just yeah. how deep. Yeah, 511 foot-pound. It's you, strong, I'm telling you what, man, when can she... Can you compare this against our best pull from last time? Because I bet it's so much, oh my gosh. The it's converter's like, way tighter, it's and like, it's pull, and the the engine's making the power to pull it. It's like not even the same car. No, because you're making peak power at fifty six hundred. Yeah, as opposed to six. Jason's gonna enjoy this ride. The fiddle hook. Yeah. The meth and the volute. That's the ticket to ride. Yeah. It's impressive, man. What would be impressive to me would be comparing it against our naturally aspirated pull. Yeah. Our baseline. All right. That's going to be pretty disgusting, really. We picked up 200. Two, 205 horsepower. To the tire. To the tire. Yeah. 205 to the The math doesn't even work. Yeah. That's, that's what? That's roughly half a bar. Yeah. So you should have picked up 160. Yeah. Ish, 170 ish. We picked up 205. It's way better than a turbo or a supercharger or any of that. That's insane. That's insane. And you're right, the converter's not doing what it was doing before, where it would like scoop up. That's right. It's just laying into it and just hammering you. Yep. Yeah. Man, this whole building shakes when this thing's going. As usual, a massive success. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, the, the amount of power, it's free power. There's no drag on the motor with that supercharger. There's no restriction in the exhaust. And on that little bit of boost, seven pounds of boost. 205 horsepower at the wheels. Yep. I mean, I, you can't beat it for this efficiency. Is more power than the Whipple has ever made at 14 pounds of boost. Yeah. So I'm saying it's like it's free power and it's just efficient power. Just by cleaning it up, the timing and the air fuel, it's gotten smoother out in the top end and everything. Right. Amazing.